12 months ago. We were in Japan at Tokyo Auto Salon 2020. Now here we are one week before more than 300,000 enthusiasts once again gather looking to get inspired and spend their hard-earned cash in the aftermarket. Or at least that's what we were all really hoping was going to happen. The show's canceled this year and the footage I captured that weekend was never released as part of our video series. I'd never been to Japan before. Honestly, I spent most of the time there just enjoying it for myself as an outsider. I figured here we are now with a new perspective. Let's dive in. Let's look at the footage. Actually, while we're here, <laughs> you may as well join us at the Koi Farms to the north before returning to the Ginza district for sushi in Tokyo. Enjoy. with uh, Deep Lifestyles. They do uh, basically clothing and they're like a fashion hype brand that uh, promotes the kind of out of this normal going with society vibe. Right. We're totally not like that. All right, so we're gonna go talk to Rico, correct? Yes. Rico is from San Francisco. Okay. He's the RWB owner of uh, RWB Yoshiwara, which is the full gold top secret paint job. Oh, yes, yes, 993. yes, yes. Uh, oh, there he is. Yeah, six speed manual with a CAE shifter. Rico has participated in Idlers for two years in a row with me. And uh, we've had lots of fun and gained lots of experience and our builds have evolved as a result of being in the race. Hey, what's going on, guys? Good to see you. What's up, Sid? What's going on? What you guys doing? This is Rico. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to Roads Untraveled. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you know to find me here? It's the RWB, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't miss it. This year in the Kaisan uh, brought Naughty Dread. This is a very iconic style. It was in uh, Tokyo Auto Salon maybe about four years ago. The day before we ship it, he says, you know, I'm not gonna wash it because it's a race car and nobody do that. And the biggest thing about RWB is style. You know, no one can argue that the cars aren't raced, that we don't do the 12 hour enduro, uh, that they don't do the either's race uh, six times a year. Mm -hmm. So he's presenting the style that Nakai san like to have on the track, but each RWB is iconic. This may not be your favorite car, but that's okay. Because in Japan, there's over a hundred RWBs. Mm -hmm. So there may be one RWB that you like, maybe not as crazy or a certain color. Even though it's not going to happen right now, the whole idea is that it's to inspire you to work harder. Mm -hmm. And that's the style of RWB. So that's why we welcome the young guys coming around, you know, filming the YouTube, they come to Japan. You will remember the good experience of RWB. And that's why RWB is on display. Yeah. I have met owners who've seen the cars, even myself. I'm sure Sid is the same. I remember when the Kaisan brought the Stella back in 2005. I remember that. And at that time, I was 25. I have my RWB is called Yoshiwara. I didn't own it for at least another 20 years. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I'm living proof. So we just want to inspire people to participate in car culture and motivate them to work hard. And that's the spirit of RWB. I have come, this is my sixth trip within uh, two and a half years. Oh. And each time I come, I keep hearing more and more stories and I want to come more. Sid's the same. Yeah. And you know, even for me, you know, I'm 41, I have 993, I have lots of cars. Each time I come, we talked about it on the way here, it inspires me to work harder. 
So inspiration never dies. That's very important. So thank you for stopping by. Thanks, Rico. Peace. Believe it or not, this was one of the media days. So I'm sure you guys can imagine what it looks like when the floodgates do actually open to the public, even just walking through the parking lot. The Japanese have a certain way of blurring the lines between business, art, and engineering. Some minds just completely erasing the lines altogether. Which of course, inside one of the largest automotive trade shows on the planet, creates fierce competition. So, we just looked at a map of Tokyo Auto Salon. I didn't actually realize how huge it is. Yeah, you won't be able to cover everything here just in one day. You gotta at least be here for multiple days. Yeah. But oh, yeah. Let's go check out. I love modified cars, like really nice clean R32 or something, but this is the shit you come to Japan for. How can you not sell buns out of this? I mean, it is. Because if you can't sell buns out of this, you can't sell buns. <laughs> That's it, man. <laughs> no, it's so true. So much of what's here is just like, out there. The entire car is a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you guys, so this is what happens at Tokyo Auto Salon. You're the most professional. <laughs> right, right here, Marcus, right here, right here. No. Garage Active R32 GTR, every body panel replaced with carbon. I mean, 295s comfortably fit all around, as you can see. And under the hood sits an NA RB30 that revs to 9,000 RPM. The all-wheel drive has been axed. This one's absolutely a real driver's car. This is Honda's 20th anniversary S2000 prototype. It's not a sales pitch. You can't even buy these cars or any of the parts on them. They're simply a showcase of what two of the greatest modern vehicles Honda made could potentially look like today if they were to be brought back into production. One thing that we definitely could not miss was the unveiling of two Liberty Walk projects by Kato-san. One was a reimagined R35. This one, an homage to the R30 Skyline RS Turbo Super Silhouette, a race car from the early 80s. It's not a GTR, but actually a GTT, except, of course, the RB25 wouldn't do a high-profile build like this justice. So it's been torn out and replaced with a modified version of a period-correct six-cylinder NA engine. 3.1 liter L28, which was the engine that originally powered a handful of R30 Skylines and other Datsun products throughout the 80s. When I talk about the fierce competition here at this show, Th this is exactly what I mean. So I got off the bullet train. Yep. Two hours from Tokyo to Niigata, about approximately. Yeah, two and a little bit. You did actually go to Niigata separately, because I remember that day you were filming, right? Yeah, in the yep. daytime. Daigo Saito, yeah. That was Daigo Saito in the morning. Yeah. And Charles dropped me off. Couldn't miss that. No, dude. I never got to meet him, but I had a. I don't know. As you viewers probably don't know, I've sold koi fish since I was 18 years old. Well, Niigata is where all of my fish come from. And, you know, almost all of the fish that 
you've come across that through me have been from there and the reason of that is being that that is the original place of where you know the actual breed of Japanese koi was created you know, more than 250 years ago so out of say a hundred to or a thousand of a farmer's carp they would find one that is like kind of a strange coloration the Japanese basically took those and over the course of 200 years 200 plus years created 40 distinct varieties that actually breed somewhat true yeah, so this first one that we're looking at here would be uh, Maruhiro Koi Farm. So he is very interesting. He breeds, he does not specialize in one type of fish, which a lot of farmers in Japan actually do. You know, master of one art instead of being the jack of all trades. So this guy, however, he breeds everything. And foreigners really love to talk to him because of his kind of like very animated personality. Definitely colder than Tokyo, um, and where the, some of the other koi farms that we went to, the roads we were driving on were very remote, and you were telling me that pretty much every building that we were driving by was a, a koi farm. Yeah, so the thing that makes the town, the particular town we were in very special, Niigata is the prefecture, which, yes. is, which is in, so kind of like the province, but then the town is called Nagaoka, and that city has about 200 koi farms. And, and within that city, it constitutes for more than half of the economy. So koi are a very, very large part of uh, their uh, part of their life. And it's also considered a national treasure in Japan as well. We were looking for uh, two uh, rather show pieces for uh, a customer that was with us, David. And one of the fish that he was looking for was a very traditional red and white, which is uh, called kohaku in Japanese. The fish that holds the world record of the largest price tag is also a Kohaku for uh, $1.8 million US. $1.8 million? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but this location, Niigata, mm -hmm. is only a two-hour drive away from Ibisu. And then, I think this was a few days later, actually, we went to a, and you had been planning this for a long time, <laughs> we went to the best sushi dinner I've ever had. I'll put it that way. Um, Sid will tell you a little bit more about it, but of course, when you go to Japan, you're, you're eating sushi, so. Wasn't it your first real sushi experience? Yeah, I mean, whatever you define real by as, yeah. I, th I mean, we were in the, like, Ginza, if I remember correctly. Just like an yeah, upper well, class kind Ginza of. Ginza is the glitziest, most most glamorous area, right? It's where all the flagship stores, where all the brand names. It's where the, it's where uh, Nissan has that mm -hmm. rotating GTR concept car. Konami was there too, I remember. Yeah, so like all the all the crazy stuff is there, you know. Like I saw a DeLorean rolling down there. Did you actually? Oh yeah, it's on my Instagram. Whoa, a DeLorean in Tokyo. Yeah, See, yeah, like that's where you would drive your DeLorean. Yeah. If you had a DeLorean in Tokyo, you know? Yeah. Like, if you want to be seen, you drive it down Ginza. This is Yamazaki-san's restaurant. Okay. And Yamazaki-san is a very special friend of mine. And to get a reservation at Yamazaki-san's restaurant, you usually have to book, like, a month in advance. Like, if you, if some of your viewers have ever seen, like, Jiro's Dream Sushi. Okay. Like, that really famous documentary of, like, the sushi chef. That like the restaurant that Obama went and ate at, like this guy's like that level kind of food, like and I'm not exaggerating at all. Well, you, you, yeah, it, so. it's a one floor spot, and there's only room for what four, maybe six people. Six to eight guests at most. Yeah, this guy garnishes his food with a legit bear claw, like a real yeah. bear claw. Yeah, insane. <laughs> Again, one of the things that makes this guy special, if, if uh, any of you guys are into this, the topic of sushi, he smokes bluefin tuna, which is a species of fish that is in decline. And, uh, you know, I do feel guilty about eating it every once in a while. However, when in Tokyo, when in Tokyo, <laughs> this is the best that they have to offer. So if, it, if it's the one chance you get to have, proper sushi you should probably try it and this guy smokes it like parma ham which is unheard of it was and this was a long dinner i mean we sat there for we just kept eating yeah they usually last <laughs> for about like an hour and a half like yeah. these these dinners uh usually have like about 13 pieces of sushi and then like one or two appetizers like a soup and then a dessert in the end 
Yeah, so he hand grates wasabi with um, like right, right here he's using like a stainless steel mesh thing, but a lot of the times they actually use a shark skin, a sheet of shark skin. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, Ginza uh, right near the Kabuki Theater, if you guys know where that is. Yeah, and in, in the light of COVID and everything, I think we'll probably be renting a car each time we go there now. 100%, yeah. Plus we're car people. What else are we gonna do? Well, you need, you basically need, here's a word of advice for you guys. You need to rent a car if you wanna go to basically any car meet. Yeah, car meet. You need to have a car. Like uh, yeah. <laughs> any of the spots on the Wangan Highway that we stop at. All right, Sid. Thanks for, thanks for talking to the roads and traveled people. No problem. Thanks guys for watching. All right, if you guys wanna follow Sid, all of his stuff is in the description and we'll see you next time. Thank you.